Hello, Biological Anthropology Lecture students. Today's mini lecture is on the subject of taxonomy. Now, taxonomy, in a broad sense, it's just a method of the scientific classification of life and forms both living and extinct. The goal of taxonomy is to group organisms in a hierarchy, a hierarchy that shows their evolution and relationship. Um, these hierarchies are categories where organisms will share traits in an ancestral form and eventually modify those to straight with descent and create new groups. Taxonomy is a way of tracking this. Um, this system was first invented back in the 1750s uh, by a Swedish botanist by the name of Carl von Linné. Um, and he just sort of randomly chose to use Latin terms for it. Um, so you're going to see a lot of organisms that are going to have Latin terms. Um, in fact, he was so enthralled by his choice, he changed his own name to Carolus Linnaeus, right? Um, so we've inherited that Latin tradition. Now, even the term taxonomy itself has a Latin root to it. Um, the, the word taxis means arrangement, um, and nomos, the onomy of part of it, means law. So, whereas taxonomy is the lawful arrangement. Now, the Linnaean system is not the only system we use to uh, classify organis uh, organisms in the sciences. Um, we can also use other techniques such as cladistic methods and phylogenetic methods. Um, now, cladistic methods and phylogenetic methods are things we'll be talking about next week. We're going to stick strictly to just the Linnaean system today. Um, but suffice it to say this that phylogenetic methods are the only methods in which classify organisms according to when these changes occurred, or when an organism had certain traits and when that was modified. There's a time dimension to it. In the Linnaean system, there is no time dimension. And one of the reasons for this is that Carl von Linné lived in a time uh, where no one knew the age of the earth, the, the antiquity of organisms, right, or had any idea that organisms evolved. That would come from an idea, of course, from Charles Darwin, which would happen over 100 years later. Now, um, nonetheless, it's still an incredibly important system and very useful uh, because what we can do um, is, is utilize it in a way of organizing our thoughts um, to understand evolution with respect to two different terms and two important terms. The first one is homology, and the second one is homoplasy. All right. Now, with homology, um, this is exactly what we're looking for to try to classify. Um, this is where you have two organisms that have similar traits that actually share a true evolutionary relationship. Okay? Uh, homology, a, a typical one might be this. Think about birds. Um, how about a pelican you know, uh, versus a finch? Um, immediately, the birds might look different, but they both fly. And that trait of flight can actually be traced back to a common ancestor in the Mesozoic. And that common ancestor is actually Archaeopteryx. Right? Now, on the other hand, we have homoplasies, not homologies, but homoplasies. This is where we'll see organisms with similar traits that do similar things, but they don't have a relatively immediate common ancestor. Um, for example, how about bats that fly and birds that fly? Birds are class A V. Bats are mammals. They don't have immediate evolutionary connection. They have independently gained the ability to flight because of selection pressures to do so. And, and that's important, too, because uh, we need to bring in this aspect, this last aspect. Homology um, works by divergent evolution. So in other words, there may be a common ancestor with a common form like wings, and then that ancestor will diverge into many different forms, right, diverging different groups, right? And that means there is an ancestral relationship, and that means we can classify utilizing the Linnaean system. On the other hand, when we have homoplasy, it's different. We have convergent evolution. That means organisms are evolving to do the same thing, right? Maybe fly because it's necessary in a different environment, you know, um, but they don't have a common ancestor. And the Linnaean system is trying to figure out which ones are hom have homoplasy, which have homology, to build a true evolutionary relationship. Now, I've placed these terms um, in a little de definition sheet. It should be below this uh, video, along with the article for you to read. Enjoy. I will have more material posted for you next week.